Welcome to Ear Biscuits, the podcast where two lifelong friends talk about life for a long time. I'm Rhett. And I'm Link. This week at the Round Table of Dim Lighting, we got a special guest. What's up, Dad? Hey, how you boys doing? <laughs> we're, we're good. We're doing good. We had to overcome some adversity to get to this point, but uh, you're you're in an interesting episode. Well, okay. <laughs> I mean, listen, I, you know... I'm talking about the hurricane. You, There's a couple of things that coincided with you coming into town. <laughs> One, a hurricane. Yep. And two, an earthquake. Yep. <laughs> so and I didn't have nothing to do with either okay. one of them. <laughs> Neither of oh, those yeah? things is your fault? Well, I was told when I got here that I was bringing a hurricane. I shouldn't have done that. <laughs> <laughs> is that a I euphemism said, for something? Yeah, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and listen, right before we started this, and I knew this was going to happen, we showed up today. The power had just gone off. Tim and Ben were in here trying to figure out how to get this stuff running off of battery battery power. Jamie was setting up all the cameras. We were literally about to roll on a completely battery-powered episode of Ear Biscuits. And then the lights came back on. Yeah, like right before we start. Because, of course, the hurricane came through last night. Yes. And it was, you know, it was... It, I mean, it wasn't much. What much? A tropical storm. I mean, I've yeah, seen I've storm. seen heavier winds in North Myrtle Beach. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's on a Friday. Oh, oh yeah, <laughs> when it rains pretty hard down there. So you were thoroughly bored by the whole thing. Yeah, we won't much to it. <laughs> no. Okay, so you're in town. You're doing a number of things uh, with us while you're in town. So I thought it would be a good idea to have uh, y'all sit in on this podcast, knowing that you have a podcast that you do together, but. I'm yes, going, we do. I'm going to. It's called Dispatches from Myrtle Beach. If you didn't know about it, um, I'm going to be asking you. This is going to be. I'm going to start with a, a little bit of an experiment, uh, maybe for my own research purposes. Okay, um, Charles. As you know, Link is regarded by many to be a man of particular tastes. <laughs> Right? Yes. Uh, there's a long list of things that he does not like and a long list of things that he does like. Well, a, sh a shorter long list of things that he does like. And He's saying I'm queer, Dad. And you know what that means. Mm, yes, I do. Yeah. We've been through all of that. Um, so what I'm going to do is I actually, uh, Lent, you've probably seen this before. I don't Weird know. With, a, with specific tastes. That's, I like how you put it. I got specific tastes. Let's just see how specific those tastes are. and Because I want to know if this is your fault. <laughs> if it's genetic. Sue's fault. Or just environmental. Okay? So, Jenna, if as I go through this, if you'll just kind of keep up with uh, how many things track, how many things they have in common, okay? It's just going to be... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go through the list of the things that Link has been uh, on the record. He has stated that he does not like. Most of it's food. Some of it might be like situations. I don't. I don't really know. <laughs> I, did, I haven't even read through it. And I just want you to 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 say yes, I agree with that, or no, I don't agree with that. And if you want to elaborate, fine. Link, if you want to defend yourself, whatever you want to do. I okay. don't feel like I need to defend myself. I mean, this doesn't feel like my podcast. This episode, it feels like I'm a guest. So <laughs> the same rules don't apply. But I'm. I don't think I need to defend any of my stances yeah, I've taken. That's right. <laughs> but, okay. Yeah, this isn't, I mean. Where did you, you get, where did you get, you said you haven't read through this. Where did you get uh, this This from? is the uh, retinlink.fandom.com. And this is, uh, which we have no affiliation to. But, and I don't even know how accurate it is, which you could verify the accuracy as we go through. Okay. And this is. So it's that, like a wiki for That us. site dash wiki dash link underscore Neil. So this is all about you. Oh, wow. Okay. And it's, this is the. What Link Neil doesn't like section. <laughs> <laughs> I got a whole section in alphabetical order. Okay. Apples. Well, I think he likes apples. But no, but what do you think about it? He wants to know if you are like me. So he's asking. Oh yeah, I like apples. Okay. <laughs> I yeah. was like, yes. you're thinking a long time about whether you like apples. But well, here's the thing. <laughs> I also like apples. Uh, well, you've stated at some point. I, I might have talked a little smack about apples in my time. I've heard you talk smack about apples multiple times. I think s apples are the most frustrating thing to eat when you're hungry because they don't fill you up. Okay, You so, think they're going to, but they don't. So you don't like apples? I don't 
like that about apples. Okay, there's something that you don't like about apples. <laughs> All right, listen, this is just A. Like, arugula. <laughs> uh, I don't even know if I know what that is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's I know type, what it is. It's a type of lettuce. It's kind of bitter. Uh, it's it, you, you can put it on pizza, right? You can put it on anything you want to. Put it on your face. You can do whatever you want to with a rugel. You can't put it on your face. You can't put it on your face. You can't. It's probably could, treatment for something. Yeah, treatment for something. I mean, just. <laughs> Dad, you don't even know what it is. All of a sudden, <laughs> you're going to use it as a treatment. You don't even know what it is. Do you like bitter lettuce? No. Okay, all right. <laughs> okay. Bitter lettuce. This one comes with, with a parenthetical <laughs> explanation. Bananas, parentheses, hard for him to eat, close parentheses. <laughs> Well, I don't like green bananas, but I don't like them when they're not, you know, overripe either. But, you know, if you get them at the right time, I like bananas. Okay, a well-timed banana you yeah. do like. I actually like a green banana. I would rather go green versus brown if you had to choose. Well, I'm not even going to try to eat a brown banana. I'm telling you that right now. So, <laughs> <but>. <laughs> Okay, so you're on the green side too. No, he's on well, the no, yellow side. I'm on side. the right side. If you had to right. choose, ah, he chooses the window when bananas are supposed to be. Eaten. Of course. Yeah. Okay, so I don't know about I don't know about um, Jenna. Just do your best. <laughs> I don't love bananas. Blood. And this is the thought of blood circulating, getting your blood taken, but also the taste of blood. Well, the way my skin is now and the way I bleed when I do things, sometimes I just take and lick it and just keep going. So, <laughs> you, you lick your wounds like a dog? Then? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Then they it just quits and I just keep on working. So. Yeah, I've never seen this man lick his own wounds. I've seen him faint or get close to it. <laughs> oh, Matter yeah. of fact, right now, I have a wound that my liquor is wounded. Look at that. Oh, yeah. oh what, what, what happened? I bit my tongue last night. Oh, really? You bit I, your tongue? I, you see that? <laughs> yeah, I saw it last night. I, I literally bit the tip of my tongue off. There's a piece of it that's now hanging, and I couldn't even sleep well last night because it was hurting so bad. Well, if you let it fall off, it'd be less, uh, be less likely to bite it the next time because it'll be shorter. I was just eating, oh, yeah, spaghetti last night. <sighs> you got confused. What's a noodle and what's a tongue? And my tongue just did not get out of the way. But it's a good thing. The tongue is the fastest healing part of the body. Yes, so, right. There you, you know, go, so, that's, that's you know, at least he bit something that would heal right up. Right, yeah. <laughs> no I'm need a, to lick it. I'm afraid of how it's going to heal, though. I mean, what's it look like? It's, it ain't as bad as it was last night. It's pretty night. nasty. There's pretty a scab big. on it. I would. Yeah. I prefer not to see it. Let's There's move on. There's a scab on it. Have you ever bitten your tongue? Do you oh, bite yeah. your tongue? Once in a while, yeah. Like once a Just month? Just about like... Mm, yeah, he bites his tongue monthly. No, I don't. I do. Once in a while, I yeah, I bite it. Not probably twice, twice a year or something. Maybe <laughs> a biannual biting. <laughs> okay, it, I, that's probably still above average. I think this is a neil. Twice thing. a year? I, I probably twice a year. I think that's normal. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Monthly is is too often. You need to see somebody about that. Well, okay. A tongue specialist. Well, that's what Christy told him. He just eat too fast. <laughs> <laughs> he, I, I think he chews too many times. Yeah, okay. We could talk about that later. Yeah. Blue cheese. Oh, Lord, I hate blue cheese. Okay, I all hate, right, we oh got a Lord, winner. I hate blue cheese, too. We got a winner. Boiled eggs, what? especially after the first one. <laughs> That's what it says here. <laughs> no, I usually eat about two boiled eggs at a time, so, I okay. mean, I like boiled eggs. Okay. I. Yeah, I'll eat one. And if it's got the right seasoning on it. And this is only a late development, like over the past year. But one. Yeah, because I would buy the peanut butter sandwich snack at Starbucks, and it would have a boiled egg in there. So I learned to eat that. Mm. I ain't eating that, Rhett. What? A peanut butter sandwich with a boiled egg in it from Starbucks. Well, not Brothers. in it, but oh, on the side of it. Oh, okay. All right, I might do that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Bologna. Oh, I love bologna. Yeah, I knew you liked bologna. Yeah, I like I mean, bologna. Fried bologna sandwich. Mm -hmm. Ooh, baby. Yeah. Mm. Butter beans. Yeah, I like butter beans. Mm -mm. Yep, me too. There's three things that start with butter. Butter fingers. Oh, yeah, I like butter fingers. Yeah, me too. I don't like butter fingers. Butter scotch. Yeah, I like butter scotch candy. Yeah. I, don't like, yeah. I don't like that. Okay, so okay, where did this butter hatred come from? Well, I like butter. 
And none of the other things you mentioned have anything to do with actual butter. <sighs> well, but butterscotch kind of t has a butter, like butter flavored buttery. candy would be butterscotch. I don't like it. It's just, uh, it's a little too rich for my blood. Cake. <laughs> oh, I like cake. <laughs> you like cake better than pie? Um, probably tip for tap if it's good cake and good pie. I like both of them. Okay. So. I like the way you yeah. think, Charles. <laughs> I mean, Which it sounds, I'm not going to shove them It's to the refreshingly side. normal <laughs> yeah. to hear someyone say, if it's good cake or good pie, I'm going to eat both of them. Because yeah. that, that's the way I never eat the world. I'm going to get a piece of both. So. <laughs> the best cake is not as good as the average pie. It just feels like too much work to think about that. But let's, we're only on C. Cake. I mean, caviar. I have not ever eaten it, so I don't know. Black eggs, fish eggs. I still ain't eat it. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. With a clarification. Yeah. Uh, this one just is a sentence. Quote, I don't love celery. Let's add it to the list. Link. <laughs> that's, that's, that's how this one got added I to the list. I guess I knew there was a list at some point. Yeah, let's add it to the list. Cel I don't love celery. Celery. I don't like it too good either, but I will eat it with a little Nancy's pimento cheese on. There okay. you go. All right, okay. We got, we're tracking there. Um, Cherry-flavored stuff. I don't like cherries. Okay, all right. Now, hold on. I like cherries, but I don't like any cherry-flavored stuff. I don't like cherries, period. What about cherry flavored, like a cherry Coke? Uh, no. Mm. See, so he's... So cherry hate came from Charles. Let's say so, yeah. Yeah, but it got diluted because you just don't like cherry flavored stuff, but you also, but you do like cherries. Mm-hmm. So that means that mm. Sue probably likes cherries. Is, yeah, that's got to be how it works. I mean, I'm not Gregor Mendel or anything. <laughs> <laughs> what about watermelon versus watermelon flavored stuff? That's not mm. on the list. Yeah, just watermelon. I I don't like. No, I just like watermelon. I don't like watermelon flavored. Stuff. Oh, actually, it is on the list. Watermelon Agreed. flavored things. Yep, there it is. Guys, we got to we got to go faster. Okay, this is gonna take forever. I want something else. To, I want to talk about something else. Uh, Cheez Its. No. Oh, chocolate chips in chocolate chip cookie dough ice cream. I don't like chocolate chips. <laughs> Why? I'm not much of a chocolate person anyway. But, okay. um, you know, I'm a peanut butter cookie man. Okay, all right. Ha <laughs> ha, there we go. That tracks. Coconut. Oh, I like coconut. Yeah, because of coconut, coconut cream. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, we had that for your favorite foods. Yeah. Cooked mushrooms as opposed to raw. I like both of them. Mm hmm Cooked sweet potatoes. Oh, I like cooked sweet potatoes. Um, Cotton candy. Uh, no. Okay, crab. Dad. Crab. Yeah, I like I, crab. I like crab too. Well, you must have said you didn't take like it. Take that at some off point. the list. I can't. I can't edit it. Uh, take crab off the list, people. Cream soda. No. No. Mm -mm. Cucumber. Oh yes. <laughs> nope. Make you burp. Dirty martinis. Well, I had never drank one, but I. You like a clean martini? I don't even know what. I, I, I mean, I'm, it's just basically gin and I'm not, some other stuff in it's it. Oil, it's an oily beverage. No, I'm just a gin and tonic man. I don't okay. like that. All right, and Link likes the gin and tonic. I do. Dr. Pepper. I like Dr. Pepper. Yeah, no, okay. there we mm, go. it's bad. All right. Medicine. Duck. Had never eaten it. Really? Mm -mm, I never tried it. Uh, have you been avoiding it? I just... Had never ordered it, so maybe I need to do that. Okay, we'll we'll, we'll rectify no, that. You, just because he's asking you doesn't mean you have to change. We'll anything. get you some oh, duck. Stuff. That's, well, no, the, that's the real like thesis it. here. Duck, no one needs to change anything. Duck is my wife's favorite meat. Like I don't, you know, I I don't. I'm not a huge fan. It's of the it. other dark meat. But if you yes. like really like dark meat, then it can be like an even darker. meat. Are you meat. a white meat man or a dark meat man? Uh, dark meat chicken. Yeah. See, you okay. might like duck. Eggnog. No. Okay. Eggs Benedict. Yes. Oh, yeah? You've had that? Yeah. Egg drop soup. No. Folgers coffee. <laughs> it, hey, it's coffee. Yeah. Instant yeah, coffee. Like yeah. Frosting. <laughs> yeah, I like frosting. Okay. Fruit punch. <laughs> this is such a dumb list. <laughs> uh, no. You don't like fruit punch? No. It's not great. 
Fruity flavored ice creams. No. Oh, well, like peach ice cream? Oh, no. I, I was thinking more like them little fruit things you see they put on ice cream. But, yeah, no, I like fruit ice cream. Pe- as like much, a peach ice cream. Yeah, as much peach and strawberry ice cream homemade that we make. Yeah, I like that. You, that did change, though, because you did agree with me that peach ice cream was the best Tillamook flavor. Yep. Yep, that was a surprise. So maybe though. the list needs to be updated. Link does like fruit flavored ice creams. I don't, Gatorade. Pre- I don't prefer it. Orange and red. Quote, more of a lemon lime man is what Link said about himself. So I, I like the red. Oh, okay. He doesn't no, like the red. I don't like the red. Ginger. No. Grapefruit. No. I like grapefruit. Update the list, people. He likes grapefruit. See, there's a few things here that I like he doesn't. Hard candy. No. Ha. Huh. See? What do you not like about hard candy? Because that's a you're scratching a lot of things off the list there. I just and mostly call, I don't like peppermint. Okay. A lot of candies, peppermint and stuff with peppermint in it and all that. You know how when the hard candy wallows around in your mouth and it like hits your teeth and makes that sound? I don't like that. Yeah, I don't like that either. See. Uh hot dogs with the twisty thing at the top. Ones that turn at the end. Like a knot at the end of the hot dog? Like the real sausage casing. Hell, I like hot dogs. I don't <laughs> care how they are. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, again, there's a lot of thought that goes into these preferences yeah. that I just I choose to use my brain for other things. <laughs> Ice cream sandwiches. Yes. They're all right. They're You've, okay. I mean, you got to watch out what you say because people are getting vibes. You, I think sometimes... You might even be just describing something you don't like about something. Yeah. And then people end up thinking that you don't like it. Oh, well, yeah. There's plenty I don't like about it. Key lime pie. Oh, I like key lime oh, pie. Oh, that's my favorite dessert. Mm. Mm. It's just not the pie I would choose. Lemon-flavored stuff. No. Nope. Okay. That's right, Dad. Licorice. No. Okay. No. Okay, all right. That's right, Dad. Lima beans, which I think, I mean, those are kind of that's, butter beans. Yeah. We're, we're, we're already been there. They're just a lot bigger. Liver. Yes, I eat liver. Oh, this is the only thing on the list that I don't like. And I usually like it if you cook it with some onions in with it and eat it. It Mm. always smells great, Mm. and I get excited about it, and then I taste it, and I can't get it down. Something not right about it. M&M's. M&M's? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I like M&M's. Yeah, right. Who doesn't like M&M's? I don't really like M&M's. Marshmallows, except in a s'more. Yes to that. Right. Yes to that. I, like, I don't. Yeah, I don't eat marshmallows unless I'm eating them in a s'more. Over That's a right. Fire. See, okay. there you go. See, minestrone soup. No. <laughs> hmm. Mint chocolate chip ice cream. No. Because you don't like mint. Okay. There you so go. See, the mint feels genetic because peppermint and mint, cherries and mint dislike feels genetic. For those people taking notes, uh, mole. Like the dark sauce on Mexican food sometimes. Mm, no. You've never had it. Just I ain't say never, you've had, never had it. No, uh, this is not a flavor preference. I think it's a scent preference. Most oh no, I thought it said most candles in general, but it says most candies in general. Somebody's you can't just add that to the list person who adds most things to the list. Candies in general. Okay. That's true though. Seaweed. No. Okay. Uh Nuts in chocolate stuff. Yes. You, you don't do like them? Yeah. <laughs> if you make brownies and put nuts in them, I will eat a brownie. I do. Okay. To get a good brownie, some chocolate stuff I don't like, but I like brownies. Keep it mushy. Don't add the crunchy. Olives. No. Okay. Yes, Dad. Okay. You're right. All right. Mm. Oreos. Not the chocolate ones. I like the new ones. It's the cream. You like with the, the, the blonde ones? Yeah. Oh. Mm-hmm. What do you think about the blonde ones? I probably don't like those either. I like the brunettes and the blonde. It's just not worth it. Uh, oysters. Oh, yeah. You can't be from Myrtle Beach and not like oysters. Oh, yeah. Or North Carolina. <laughs> uh, pepperoni. No. Oh. You don't like pepperoni? No. I like pepperoni. So what do you get on a pizza? Well, I can eat it on a pizza, but I just don't. What's your favorite pizza order? Uh, 
like a uh, extravaganza one with all kind of vegetables and yeah, like a supreme. Yeah, <laughs> uh, extravaganza is not a supreme. Now I don't know the difference, but they tells- sound similar. Yeah, I mean, one place is the name of one thing. One yeah, right. I mean, I, of- I guarantee you, <laughs> somewhere out there, right. there's a pizza place that's called Extravaganza, and then okay. it's just really supreme. Uh, pretzels. <laughs> no. Oh, there you go, okay. Dad. Mm-mm. Okay. They're burnt, right? They taste burnt. I don't know what they taste like because I ain't eat them. But it's like a twig. Times, yeah, I don't like them. Okay. Just because you tie a twig in a knot doesn't mean you need to eat it. <laughs> okay. All right. Strong preference there. Red kidney beans. Yes. Eat them in chili. Yeah. 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 You don't want to have Not too many. They chili. make a chili. Yeah. What, I mean, in my mind. Root beer. No. Okay. No. All right. So you like Dr. Pepper, you don't like root beer. Mm-mm. Hmm. Okay. That's inconsistent there. You need to not like all of them. Runny eggs. Oh, yeah. Well, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Rum. Mm, I can live with it and live without it. Link liked rum a lot at one point, but there was an incident in a bathtub mm-hmm. uh, at the house that he was living at right when they got married where he yep. he got into the bathtub with a bottle of Malibu rum. When I got out, there was no more rum, and I did not feel great. <laughs> uh, well, that's probably, you know. That broke me. It's Malibu's kind of sweet. Yeah. And you're supposed to just mix it, not drink it by itself. You're supposed to put it with some of that fruit punch you were talking about a right, while yeah, ago. Yeah, yeah. You're not you supposed know, to get yeah. warm in a hot bath and just drink a no. big bottle of rum. <laughs> no. <laughs> I liked it not too much. Good, probably it ain't a good idea to get in the bathtub and drink a big bottle of anything. <laughs> so. Right, except maybe just water or Gatorade. Well, I, yeah. I wasn't taking a blow dryer into the tub, Dad. I mean, well, hmm. saffron. I don't know if I know what it is. It, it's a, Something it's sweet. a really, no, it's like a particular, like, uh, Spice that is in a uh, usually in a paella is where I've had it. No, but if it's too much of it, it's ba- even I don't like it. But a little bit's good. It's like gold shards. Uh, Samoas. Is that a type of Girl Scout cookie? Yeah, that's the one with the coconuts. I think. Yeah. So you probably like them. Yeah, probably like them. Uh, Skittles. I like. I uh, no, no, I ain't too crazy about Skittles. Me neither. Okay. Pointless. Smoked Gouda, if it's really smoked. <laughs> well, Gouda's a kind of cheese, ain't it? Yeah. No. Okay, okay, okay. Cheese hate runs pretty deep in this lineage because your dad. Oh, no. My dad. He like hated cheese. Yeah, in general. He would talk so much crap about cheese. But it had yeah. something to do with milking cows. Oh, yeah. It, it was from having the. His front was from, he didn't like it because he had to go out and milk cows all the time, and that was hard work, and then you had to churn it into churn. I think he had to do part of that, too, so to get it to make butter and get the cheese. So he Because he didn't eat butter either. Really? Okay, so. He's anti-cow work. He doesn't like dairy in general. He yeah. didn't like, no, he did not. <sighs> okay. Uh, Spamish meats. Mm, no. Okay. What about vine sausages? Well, I used to eat them when I was growing up, but I still ain't too crazy about them. Okay. I mean, Good. Yeah, yeah. Sriracha sauce. Is that rooster sauce? Yeah. I like it. Yep. Mm, I don't like it. Steak. We know you like steak. That oh, was yeah. one of your favorite foods, wasn't it? Yeah. What do you not like about steak? Can you state it for the record? Um, Maybe they can add this to the list. It's it's too meat slabby. <laughs> it's like a big slab of meat. Yeah, yeah. I see. You mean a steak? <laughs> and I don't. <laughs> it's too don't, meat slabby. I, I don't love that. You like your meat to be mixed into other things? Yeah, I like it to be processed, but not too processed. So, but Red, he he needs to just get a good filet mignon that's about like that and about that thick. It's just me to cook. It's, it's, it's then, like you've just grabbed part of a cow, oh, no. yanked it out, and just put it on a plate. It's, mm-hmm. Well, yeah, that's kind of what meat is. Yeah, any kind it's of meat. Part of an yeah. animal that yeah. was grabbed and put on a plate. Uh, There's other things that happen between there, there yeah. and here, but <laughs> that's right. <laughs> and it's not great for you anyway. So it's a win-win. Uh, sushi. No. Okay. But let me clear. I I have never tried it, so maybe I shouldn't answer that. You don't well, like I the did. idea of it. Yeah. But you like oysters. 
Oh, yeah. And you'll do them on the half shell? Just Oh, yeah. Uh, hey, do them before they cook anything. Okay. All right. Maybe. So you, pro- you probably would. Maybe like you could do that. sushi, Dad. Okay. Alone. Uh, tea. <laughs> yeah, I like tea. Is this is this true? I don't love tea. No. <laughs> thick burgers. <laughs> if you're going to get a thick burger or a thin burger, which one are you going to choose? I, I, I can eat both, so I mean, I yeah. can eat both. But what do you prefer? But so you don't have. I to. really don't prefer. I mean, it's, I, I don't. If it's a thick one, it can't be just raw in the middle. Right. But if oh, it's cooked yeah. to where it's still pink, I I don't mind. It. Okay, there's an interesting dynamic that I that I see developing here, and I, it's interesting because uh, what I've noticed about Link's brain is he de- he sees a category of something and he automatically puts it into a spectrum or a binary, right? Burgers, thick, thin. Specifics, and man. Then, and then he decides that he likes one and that necessarily means he kind of doesn't like the other end of the spectrum. Oh, yeah. I'm like you. I'm like, okay, if you if you pin me down, maybe I'd come up with a preference. But like, if you give me a thick burger, I'm not thinking, I wish this wasn't a thick burger because what it is in front of me right now is a thick burger <laughs> and I enjoy burgers. Seems like you and you I'm approach so, your life in that and way. And sometimes I think when you <laughs> Which is a better a way, bur- by the way. burger and it's thin, it don't have as much taste to it as that thick burger with still some of the juices and stuff in it. It does. I think it has There's more There's just taste. things to enjoy about yeah. both thick and thin. Oh, yeah. I think I'm on Link's side here that thin is better because of sur- surface area. But, so in his defense, I think he's on the right side of the spectrum, but he shouldn't just pick one side of the spectrum because he's ruling out a whole side of the spectrum that he could enjoy. I can eat a thick burger. But you're not going to have a good time doing it. I'm going to wish it was a <laughs> right. thin a burger. smash burger. That's going to take a lot of that's going to take a lot of your energy in that moment is to is is not liking it. <clears throat> Let's move on. Thin mints. <laughs> so we got thick burgers and then thin mints. Another girl scout cookie. You don't like mint, no. so you don't like it. Tomatoes. Yes. You like a tomato sandwich like oh, a yeah. like a good southern man should. What's so good about it, Dad? I don't I don't get it. It's like a watery It's like um, like like if you run water through some sort of I don't know, fruit device that then it makes everything nasty about the water and then there's like seeds. It's just like gross tasting water in a fruit. What? I well, what took a long time for you to say and not mean, mean nothing about a good tomato sandwich? <laughs> <laughs> Tomatoes hey, suck, man. Hey, no, I love it. Hey, they're gross, and I grow them. So, and I look forward to getting the first one of the year and Ooh. and getting a good slab of it and put some deep mayonnaise oh, on yeah. that white bread and get on under some salt and salt pepper and pepper and just get with it. Oh man, that's such a good thing. Mm. And you know, they don't, they're the only thing that tastes like. That. Oh, yeah. You I know, see. there's no, nothing else that tastes like a tomato. A tomato is its own thing. Well, I must have done something special because I got a son that don't like tomatoes, and I got a daughter, Lauren, that would just pluck them off the vine and eat them and still will till the day. So okay. I got two kids that one loves them and one don't. You never know how the genes are going <laughs> to. I mean, my mom likes tomatoes, too, so it ain't that. It's environmental. Tuna. Yes. Yeah. Turkey. Yes. I don't know. I don't, I'm, I'm more of a ham man. Yeah. But if there's ham there in Turkey there, which one are you going to choose? Turkey. I don't like ham. Oh, shoot. This is a big development. You don't like ham. You know, he's a ham man. I know. You he's don't know, he's like known him. for overcooking them, but he's really known for liking them. Well, it's kind of like Rhett when my sister and her husband, Dan and her got married, er, er, not maybe every Sunday, but every other Sunday, my mama cooked the ham for lunch, for Sunday lunch, and everybody come and eat. After about five years, Dan told my sister, told Troy, said, would you please tell your mama I don't like ham? <laughs> <laughs> it takes about five years to work up the, <laughs> wow. the ham courage. Yeah, so, but I, and She's that may be why I don't week. like it so much, because I mean... She, she you got hammed to, out. Yeah, just mm. okay. 
Okay. See, I re- I respect that. I respect well, that, your decision. That's a pretty big deal. I mean, have y'all had Thanksgiving together recently? We're planning on it this Couple year. Years I'm, ago. I'm trying to get in and make ribs. <laughs> okay. <laughs> hey, it's a win-win. We don't have to have this argument. Yeah. Okay. Oh, we ain't gonna argue. He ain't got to eat no turkey. I don't care. It's more for me. Right. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> what do you think attitude. about ribs, though? Are you? Oh yeah, we're gonna go for the ribs. Okay. You're you're open to actually... Thanksgiving ribs. Oh. I, yeah, I mean, yeah. I, that sounds good to me. Uh, you can come. Wasabi. Wasabi. That's the green stuff that comes with sushi. So if you're not a sushi person, I you probably haven't. Probably had it. no. I haven't had it. I don't. Oh, know. you need to have it. A lot of it. Uh, <laughs> we've already covered watermelon. We're in the W's. We're almost done. Watermelon okay. flavored things. Like watermelon flavor. I like candy. no, I don't like watermelon okay. flavor. Yeah, that's right. Werther's original, hard candy, which kind of falls under all hard candy, which we've been. There. But I have ate a Werther's original, kind of helped my throat, kind of liked it. So, yeah, but I it's caused like it. some of them had some butterscotch in it. That's yeah. what. Yeah, there's a crossover not great. butterscotch. It's not and great. Werther's. And then finally, uh, Worcestershire sauce. No. Nope. That's right. Okay. It's, it's strange. But I it's, use it in a lot of stuff, but I don't, I just don't put it on something. It seems like it's something that should go on the wound of a horse or something. You could probably, you could probably treat a wound <laughs> you with could it. Probably, yeah. It's probably better than nothing. It may, it may have something in it like turpentine. You're right. <laughs> it won't make your horse worse. Okay. So, Jenna, uh, just shy. rough back of the napkin uh, math. What, how are we, how are we looking percentage wise here on the, on the, how they line up? Uh, percentages, I don't know, but we got we got thirty four. You lined up on as like things you don't. There you go. Yeah, you got thirty four things. That's okay. pretty good. Uh, you can do the math at home. Yeah, you, yeah, I don't know how. Uh, and I'm not going to go through the list of things that he likes, even though it is significantly shorter. We're going to move on. Ear biscuits is brought to you by BetterHelp. You know we love therapy, and we want therapy to be accessible to everyone. And BetterHelp is a great option especially when you're like uncertain about things and you want to res- or you want to resolve tension mm-hmm. therapy is a great answer yes whether you're dealing with the decisions about career relationships or anything else therapy helps you stay connected to what you really want when you navigate life so you can move forward with confidence and excitement and therapy can really help you learn positive coping skills how to set boundaries and empowers you to be the best version of yourself that's why we think you should give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. All you gotta do is fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist, and you can also switch therapist anytime for no additional charge. Let therapy be your map with BetterHelp. Visit betterhelp.com slash ear today to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P, dot com slash ear. Ear Biscuits is supported by Chime. Credit scores are pretty important. If you have low credit or no credit, then you might have some financial problems in your future. That's why millions of people swear by Chime's secured Credit Builder Visa credit card. Credit Builder is just a better way to build credit. You can build your credit score safely with everyday purchases and on-time payments. There's no annual fees, interest, or credit checks to apply, and you can use it anywhere Visa credit cards are accepted and build credit using your own money. And with a Chime checking account, you can get paid up to two days earlier with a qualifying direct deposit? Yes. When you sign up for SpotMe, you can overdraft up to $200 without fees. Chime will spot you up to your limit when you make purchases that exceed your balance. Plus, Chime has access to over 60,000 fee-free ATMs, which can be easily found with the Chime app. That's more than the top three national banks combined. And you can send and receive money from friends fee free no matter what bank they use. Your credit's a big deal, so build yours up with Chime. Just open a Chime checking account with a $200 plus qualified direct deposit to get started. Get started at chime.com slash ear. That's chime.com slash ear. The Chime Credit Builder Visa credit card is issued by Stride Bank NA, member FDIC. Chime checking account and $200 qualifying direct deposit required to apply. Out of network ATM withdrawal fees may apply. On time payment history may have a positive impact on your credit score. Late payment may negatively impact your credit score. Results may vary. Ear Biscuits is supported by Rosetta Stone. Do you want to learn a new language? I love the idea of learning a new language. I like to be able to bust out some French and just be like, Hey, look at me, I can speak French. But 
even more pertinent, I think, is if I want to travel to France, I'd kind of like to be able to connect, you know, and not just be like, I am the guy who can only speak English. That's where Rosetta Stone comes in. The most trusted language learning program available on desktop or as an app. It truly immerses you in the language you wanna learn. It's useful to know another language. You never know when it can come in handy. And Rosetta Stone has used trusted experts for 30 years with millions of users and offers 25 languages, including Spanish, French, Italian, German, Korean, Chinese, Japanese, Dutch, Arabic, and Polish, just to name a few. It immerses you in so many ways for fast language acquisition. It's designed for long-term retention and has no English translations, so you really learn to speak, listen, and think in that language. And their built-in true accent feature gives you feedback on your pronunciation so you can speak like a pro. It's truly an amazing value. Lifetime membership has all 25 languages for any and all trips and language needs in your life a $299 program, but with our code, you can get it for just $179. So don't put off learning that language. There's no better time than right now to get started. For a very limited time, you can get Rosetta Stone's lifetime membership for 40% off. That's $179 for unlimited access to 25 language courses for the rest of your life. Redeem your 40% off at rosettastone.com slash ear today. Okay, so uh, so we have established that there are some environmental factors that have contributed to Link's preferences. Mm -hmm. But, you know, he's been in Los Angeles for 12 years now, 12 and a half years. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you think that L.A. has made him weirder? I think it's made both of you different. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. You, he's got to put. That's I'm right, Dad. You got to pull okay. red into this too. Okay, yeah, I'll I, take it. But I mean, uh, you know, I, you know, people ask me all the time uh, you, that that I get and tell them about y'all show and get on it, and I say, now listen, they live in a different world out there, <laughs> and they're kind of different than they were when uh, they left North Carolina, but. Uh, I think they've done well, and I'm proud of them. What, what do you mean different? How do you mean different? When you think about that we're different, what you talking about? Well, you got different point of views about different stuff, and mm -hmm. I ain't bringing all that up. Okay. <laughs> yeah. all right. We get started on that, this ear biscuit thing will last till in the morning. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the different. That could be a whole series. You guys could talk about that on your podcast. Yeah. But, I mean, I, you You're know, talking religion, politics? Well, that. Yeah, that mm. But Social I mean, justice, uh, you know. But I, I still, I'm sorry. I, not just that, but I mean, I, I think you <laughs> changed the way because of what y'all do, how y'all look at stuff, hmm. and what and what comes out of y'all's brain sometimes, and all these people that work for y'all. I mean, it's kind of amazing to me what y'all do and where it comes from sometimes. Well, that's something I noticed and I t uh, talked to, to Link about is that we, um, you know, you show up for, to do something with us, whether it's the podcast or whether it's like Mythicon or it's the, you know, the time that you're here, we get you to do so many crazy things. And you just sign, you're just willing to do it. You sign up for everything. So like, how do you, look, when you think about this world, this mythical world that you step into from time to time, <laughs> um, because I, I, I was telling Link, I was like, he's, you know, I was, Link, I was like, Link, you're not as compliant as you're, when we ask you to do things, like, you got a lot of questions. But Link starts with a lot of questions. He, wanna make, he wants to know exactly what he's getting himself into. We tell you, hey, put this hat on and say that your name is Chaz and that you're 22 years old or whatever we did for that, <laughs> that uh, episode that'll come out at some point. And you're like, okay. So what is your thought process when we just ask you to do something? Like we made you into an alien with four arms at Mythicon. And I don't think we told you until you had already landed. You were in Austin before we told you that what you were doing. Well, there's been a lot of that. <laughs> yeah, right. I mean, uh, I don't think they tell me because they know that they just wait and it's just a spur of a moment thing that, I'll go ahead and do it. If they tell me in advance, I ain't going to show up. 
<laughs> you feel manipulated? I don't want you to feel manipulated, Dad. Well, how else would you feel? Okay, we'll start telling you ahead of time. No, I just think I, I kind of, but no, I mean, I think sometimes <laughs> the spontaneous stuff is what people like to see from me, I guess, That's because right. they see it from y'all all the time. It, yeah, there's no so, need to overthink it. Just go. Hey, right. if, if y'all asked me to do something that I didn't want to do, I would say no. You would just say no. Yeah, I'd say no. But in general, um, you trust the, you're trusting the process. Yeah. yeah. It's working out very well. Um, I mean, it's fun. I, I like. I mean, I enjoy doing our podcast, and and I I don't I like doing coming in here with y'all. And I mean, you can't hurt my feelings. I'm too old to get my feelings hurt. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, and there, there's there's kind of go along with a lot of them. Yeah. Well, there's and there's an interesting dynamic, right? So, um, the first time that y'all work together. You were you were in charge because you he when Link uh -huh. started uh, working for you when he was raising support and he was painting, mm -hmm. uh, and now the dynamic has shifted a little bit where you're stepping into his world. So uh, let's talk about the, that different dynamic. Like, how did you how do you because the stories that Link's te Link tells about working for you is that you he was like no he was particular about how he wanted something done on a on a job site oh yeah in a way that it's a completely different thing when you're stepping in our world so tell me about that about how you approach what you do versus what you do when you come and uh, work for us <laughs> well that's me that's a different thing for me because i've about worked for myself all my life whether it was farming and then getting into the painting business and remodeling and stuff so you know, when you get into that, but uh, it kind of came to reality when one day I got a letter in the mail at the house from Good Mythical Morning, and I opened it up, and it said, this was from, I guess it's kind of from both of y'all, that I had to sign something on the bottom of well, you know, that I was representing y'all and working for y'all. And then <laughs> I thought to myself, you know, if I sign this, I ain't got no say so about what I'm gonna do anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, you had to sign your life away to it. So <laughs> well, I don't know about that, but uh, <laughs> did you read it? <laughs> You're talking yeah, about the release form that yeah, you had to sign. Yeah, yes, so I signed it and sent the, it on back. Permission to put you on camera. Yeah, and all that stuff. But you know, it's it's. You um, said that I was your boss. Across. That's what I said. I told somebody. I said, "Well, it's kind of ironic. I was his boss for all them years." Now Link's gonna be my boss, and I'm gonna have to do what he says, which it ain't been too bad. I mean, he don't, and Rhett don't get involved much with it, so it leaves me, it leaves us alone. <laughs> That's right. I figure y'all can handle it. He's a looming, yeah. he's a looming figure, and mm -hmm. I'm not really much of a boss. Who's the real boss? Mm -hmm. If you were, if you were to say who's really in charge of of your interactions here, me. Oh. Really? Mm -hmm. Okay. I thought you were going to say Logan. <laughs> <laughs> well, Logan helps me with my interactions, but I'm pretty in charge of my interactions. <laughs> well, that is the thing. I mean, the thing I said when we started Dispatches from Myrtle Beach, I was like, all right, Dad, this is your show. I'm just, I'm just along for the ride. But, I mean, when you do your, your day job, would you call yourself a, a perfectionist? Yes. People would tell you that. But then, when you're in our world, you just you seem to be a lot more easygoing. Like you just kind of go along with it. Do you think you're a perfectionist when it comes to this stuff? Or well, I think when you when you do what I do, you got to you you should know what you're doing. You got to know what you're doing yeah. to do it. When we're taping dispatches and doing stuff. It's just stuff that's kind of, when people send in questions and I don't read them before, it's just something that comes off, to, and my answers come off the top of my head, and it's just more like a natural thing to right. kind of let things flow and that you really don't have to worry whether it's right or wrong. Right. It's a way to kind of just react, interact with the people that are sending you, sending you stuff in and everything. It's sort of art versus science. Yeah. When you're painting something or you're doing sheetrock or tile or whatever, uh, it may there may be an art side to it, but if you don't mix the grout right, 
Oh yeah. There's a you mechanical got a problem. problem. Yeah. What's the worst thing that could happen with dispatches? That people just quit watching it. Right, because it's not for them. Yeah. Uh, what's the worst thing that could happen in your day job? I call it his day job because he's moonlighting as a right in that personality. <laughs> <laughs> um, ask me that question again. What's the worst thing that can happen with your day job? Yeah, I'd just go on and get another job. I mean, if somebody, I've had people. Well, you could fall off a ladder and die. Well, damn, I've been doing it for 40 years and ain't done that yet. So. <laughs> okay. And I fell 40 foot one time, so, I mean. Really? Yeah. How did that happen? Uh, it was... I was doing something I ought not have been doing. What do you mean? I propped a 40-foot ladder up against a house, and it it was a new construction, and it was up and down, so I put a cinder block up under one side of the ladder. When I got up at the top of the ladder, the cinder block tilted. The ladder fell over, and I had to hold the ladder on this side and the window on this side. Oh. So I How long were you there, hours? Oh, no. Hell, I couldn't hold on that long. (laughs) And I tried to find a spot to jump off and get into. So I pushed the ladder. The paint bucket went through the window inside the house. <laughs> and I went to the ground. Oh. And Did you slide down the house? like like a? No. I jumped back from the ladder and landed in the... And it was wet enough and mud that it wasn't so hard. And I kind of hit the ground, tumbled and rolled. And uh, Wow. You didn't went, break anything? No. Got up. Put the ladder back after I went in, and we got the boys that's working, went in and cleaned all the paint up inside the house. Put the ladder back up on the house and said, this ladder ain't going to whip me. And went back up and painted what I was going to paint. Whoa! And when you but went back this, up there, is that when you got struck by lightning? Oh, no, that was a long time, a long time after that. But, Brett, <laughs> when I got up there and I got through with what I was painting up there in Link, I noticed my legs were shaking, like, you don't need to be up here right now. And I finally told myself, said, you ain't, you ain't real confident in yourself right now. So I got down off the ladder. When got one of the guys working for me, we put the ladder down, put everything on the van, and I said, boys, we going home. And I carried them all home. Yeah, I was about to say. You were shook up, but it was more oh, yeah. in your legs. Well, I mean. When you fall 40 uh, feet, I, I think you can take the rest of the day off. I mean, I, th- I think that's the least that you you, you can do. <laughs> right. I mean, and going they, to the hospital is also one option. Yeah. But you didn't need to do that. Oh, uh, I was all right. What's the dumbest thing that Link ever did when he was working for you? <laughs> <laughs> and if you need time to t- narrow it down. <laughs> um. Probably asked and me, I don't know if this is the dumbest, but I, I put him in a job hoping that it would convince him that he needed to get a good education and put it in, put him in a little hole somewhere up, and it was hot. <clears throat> and I'd check on him once in a while, but he finally just— <laughs> Painting in a hole. Yeah, well, it was in a little bathroom in a nook thing, and uh, he come down and says— I just, I ain't doing this no more. It's too hot. So, uh, you would always put me in the crappiest places. Oh, yeah. And you were doing that. That was a strategy. Oh, yeah. You were like, I don't want you to be doing this. Well, I wanted him to figure out that if he wanted to come aboard and one day be a part of my business, that this is what it took to do it. Because, I mean, I I had done it before. Right. I had never put him in a situation that I hadn't been in. But, I also wanted him to <clears throat> see that if he got an education, he wouldn't have to work like I did. Right. So, Well, speaking of that, um, he's made some pretty un- – well, together, we've made some pretty unconventional choices, <laughs> career choices, right? I'm telling you. Uh, <laughs> so when he got his engineering degree and started working as an engineer, uh, what were you thinking at the time? Oh, man, he's – he he he's made it. Got out of school. Got, got a made. got a good job. Was making good money. I mean, and I knew he could look after his family and kind of do what he wanted to. So, you know that. You know, I was proud of. Him. And then, what did you think when not too long after that he said, "I'm going to be 
doing a different kind of job, which involves me going around and asking people for money. Well, I didn't have, I, you know, I was probably, I don't know if I was the only one, but I was pretty close to the only person in our family that didn't object to that. Because, I mean, if you work for yourself, you have to ask people for money and tell them how much something costs. That's true. <clears throat> and if you trying to do something like y'all did then and asking them for money, it's kind of letting them trust enough in you that that's what you needed help with and how you were going to get paid. Okay. So I, I didn't have a problem with it. There was some people, <laughs> you know, my mom and daddy, <laughs> yeah, yeah. my daddy especially, uh, mama too, but daddy, you know, he, he was from the same cloth, probably grew up like your mom and daddy. You work for a living, mm -hmm. you get a paycheck, and you don't have to rely on anybody else except right. for where you're working at. So, you know, <clears throat> I didn't have much of a problem with it. And then after that period of time, then when he said, I'm going to, me and Red are going to do this internet thing. Like, what were you thinking at the time when you heard that? And this is probably, you know, back in like when we first started, like 2007. Yeah. yeah. Well, <clears throat> I was still one of the probably the only ones in the family that didn't have a problem because it's kind of like y'all were going out and doing something together, but you were working for yourself. <clears throat> if you work for yourself, you got to pay your dues and do what you do and just keep going. And and uh, I always had to think in the back of my head for both of you, if this don't work out for you, you both got engineering degrees, hell, you can find a job somewhere. <laughs> yeah. Right. You know, and, so. And, so for you, and you had done a lot of, like, figuring out what it is you wanted to go for. And if even okay. if people you know, didn't agree – you know, at some point, you just can't do what other people want you to do. You got to do what you want to do for yourself. And I think you did a lot of that, right? Yeah, I did that because, I mean, I I had a job one time. If I'd have stayed there, I could have been retired from that job working at the prison department. And I, when I had I had about seven years in it, and I just quit and give it up to <clears throat> go to work somewhere else. But you do something full time for myself because, I mean, I had— Farmed and worked by for myself, and sometimes when you work for yourself, like y'all, you have to figure out <clears throat> what you want to do to be happy. It's kind of like what I've said on the on dispatches. You know, I, people have wrote in and asked me questions <clears throat> about what should I do, and I said, well, the first thing is find something that every time you get up in the morning, you want to be glad that you're going to work mm -hmm. and that you enjoy it, and if you can make a living at it then that's what you need to be doing. You don't worry about what some, somebody else tells you. So, It's good advice. It's good advice. We've been following it for a long time. <laughs> yeah. you, you heard about us like in the in the Lillington basement. We were like oh, yeah. doing our thing, and then Nan and Papa came around to it because they started coming over and watching our live show, you know? Yeah. And Papa would fall asleep during the live broadcast. Right. So it, to the point where we started putting a, a second camera. Papa cam. On him, just to show that he was there but asleep. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's kind of like that nap thing you did the other day, and when you get old, you can take a nap most anywhere, can't you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't think, yeah, I think he was happy that we were succeeding on some level, but he wasn't particularly interested in the, uh, the no. content himself, which is, it, which is fine. He doesn't like cheese either, so we no. can't trust his opinion. <laughs> um, so do you think, Doing the podcast together, you know, because obviously y'all had interactions growing up, but because Link lived with Sue for most of his adolescence mm -hmm. and stuff, you know, your 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 interactions were limited. Then you obviously you worked together um, when he was painting for you. But do you think that the podcast are y'all as close as you've ever been because of the podcast? Probably closer. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I mean. I, I have learned something from him that, like, one day I, I used to call him on, like, he brought, he said, I, we did this on the podcast, and he, he said, Dad calls me, and I'd say, you need to call me right now. And then he would text me that. I'll text him that like it's an emergency. I need you to call me. 
Yeah. And like it was an emergency, really want an emergency, it's just somehow, you know, trying to, because you can't get him on the telephone, so you might as well text. That's true. Which I can understand. I understand that more now, too, than before because of y'all's schedules and stuff. But it's, uh, uh, you know, so I have learned something about him that kind of pushed some buttons and that maybe I don't need to need to be, you know, well, you know, to throw a little bit of turmoil in your day. <laughs> so, uh-huh. <laughs> so, you know, <clears throat> I've learned to kind of let back and just be at more ease about what I ask him. And so now when you want to talk to me, what do you text? That's not, I need you to call me. Well, if I text him and ask him, I just say, look, look, if you get if you got time, how about give me a call? See, he What's learned something? something on the podcast. So, Not to alarm me so Versus much. call me when you can in all caps. You don't yeah, do that anymore. Yeah, nah. I need you to call me. <laughs> <laughs> what he was saying. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, I feel, yeah, I feel like we've talked about a lot of stuff on the podcast. Just You know, it's just like that doesn't come up in – sometimes conversation is hard. You know, when you're hanging out with family, especially when – you don't live in the same place, and then you're like, you get on the phone, and it's it's just about catching up. All right, which of your friends is in the hospital? Yeah, I mean, how are you feeling? How's Nancy doing? What y'all been up to? And then you're talking about the weather, and then it's kind of like, all right, and now we're at the end of our conversation. Right. You know, I I didn't know how starting the podcast, what it was going to be like at all. You know, the fact that. It because we had a format and you had you were getting all these emails. It gave us other things to talk about. Oh yeah. And sometimes you you know I think it injected a lot of it. It opened up a whole new world of stuff we can talk about. I feel like I learned just as much about you. Like I didn't know that you've been struck by lightning. I mean I didn't notice you fell forty feet off a ladder until just now. Yeah, these are two pretty big details. That yeah. you would think you know about somebody. It's got a lot of details. You know, it's just it's just not the t- well, like when you get on the phone with your parents, you're like, Hey, Dad, tell me the last time tell me the biggest injury you've ever had on your job. You know, it's just kind of like I I think it would be a good practice to like to connect with family members or something like that to to ask good open ended questions. But it's just not the It just it, doesn't happen. It just doesn't happen, you know? It's like when you're t- when you're talking to your to your family. And even when I would text him to call me, I'm not a get on the phone, talk to you for 30 minutes. No. That ain't, going, that ain't going to happen. Right. I don't understand how people do it <laughs> and I won't it. ever be there. I mean, if I'm going to, hey, if it's bad enough that I need to talk to you for more than five or ten minutes, I'm probably going to get on a plane and fly here and talk to him. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm not going to try to do it. And even with this FaceTime stuff. That you could, you know, make it where you can. That that probably, I mean, if I need to talk to somebody, I mean, if I need to talk to somebody at home and it's, I really want to have a conversation with them, I don't do it on the phone. Right. I go see them. Mm -hmm. Because I'm going to see how to react because I can be pretty upfront how I feel and tell you about how I feel about something. Sometimes so, you you saying sometimes you the way you say things maybe rubs people the wrong way. Hell, I hurt somebody's feeling. Oh, okay. I mean, me too, man. But I mean, <laughs> and I, but that's a big. I mean, very direct. Uh, I, and I've been I've been told that by Nancy that I need to calm down a little bit about that, <laughs> and I try to do better. But I mean, <laughs> people that's known me all my life will tell you that's one thing. One of the things they'll tell you about me. You are going to know how I feel about something, whether mm-hmm. you like it or not. That runs in the family. <laughs> so that's just the way it is. So I'll get, he, he did get a little bit of some kind of traits from me. <laughs> well, he got, he got a number of traits, <laughs> anyone who's watching. <laughs> okay, so that's, those are some things that you've learned about each other. What have you learned about yourself in doing the podcast together? Both of you can answer this question. Well, I I have learned that there's a lot of things I don't know anything about that maybe I ought to be <laughs> trying to 
learn some more things about some of the questions and stuff. But then you kind of have to <clears throat> when because we've had some people ask some pretty serious questions about mm -hmm. life, and they ask me my opinion. And when they ask me that, I got I I kind of step back a little bit and say, "All right, mate, you you just can't tell them what." You do with somebody that you know you tr try to give them a good answer, but one that they got some options with, <laughs> right? And stuff. Um, that's one of the things I have. Because I mean, we've had some questions on uh, dispatches that people ask me for advice for, and <clears throat> and I give them advice, but it's I try to articulate to them a little bit more. Right, what they need to do than me just if they were one of my friends and I'd go in and tell them something. This is what you need to do, or this is what I think you need to do. So you you uh, <clears throat> you package it a little bit more carefully. Yeah, because so, they write back sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> this is what happened when I applied your advice. Yeah. Did you ever think you shouldn't do it, especially early on when it was like, "Hey, why don't we do this thing?" Didn't, mm, didn't seem like it. No. No, I mean, hey, it was something new, and I, you know, I kind of, I, I, it was kind of like what I said about finding something that you like to do. If you, <clears throat> if you enjoy it, just keep trying and see how it works out. I mean, I enjoy mm -hmm. it and getting together because I get to talk to him, and it's just a pretty good thing. Seems like you never really got in your own head about it. Like, I don't know if you ever were nervous about it at any point. Well, maybe the first time or two talking into a microphone or into that camera where mm -hmm. you're looking at and stuff, it, it was a little overwhelming. Right. You know, but as it went along, it's kind of like I don't even know it's there. And just, yeah, you adjusted very quickly. <clears throat> yeah. That was my observation, that you got comfortable very quickly. I don't know what I learned about myself. I don't know. I, I didn't – I felt like it was – like our interactions from the beginning were like – were like I said, different than like a normal phone interaction. I'm like, well, what's a – what's what are people going to connect with, you know? Is it like – does it just have to be ridiculous and extreme? I think there's been – kind of a, a a development, like an evolution of the podcast. At first it was just like what can what can I get dad to react to, you know? And then I think pretty early on we discovered that like, oh, there's actual we're this is there's actual legitimate connection here. We are learning things about each other, you know, um and uh, uh, learning things about ourselves, mm -hmm. I guess. Mm -hmm. And then uh yeah, I think it, like, once it's settled into, like, there's, like, moments where it's, like, all right, th we're just having this conversation for the fun of it. And then there's other times where we're, like, oh, we're, we this is a great conversation that I'm grateful that we're having. And if it wasn't for the podcast, we wouldn't be having it, but we are having it the same way we would have if it wasn't on the podcast. Right. And so being at that comfort level and getting there pretty quickly I think was pretty – that was something that I I didn't know how it was going to feel, and then I was like, "Wow, this is this is rewarding on a number of levels." And if if it's rewarding for us, and if people want to listen in, and whatever they're whatever they're re relating to, or or um, you know, the, the, I couldn't anticipate what all those things would be. Yeah, well, it's been a lot and, of and things. Control I it. think, Rhett, that. And I think somebody here or something <clears throat> told me that we are really the only father and son that's really doing a podcast like this mm -hmm. that people listen to. And it's helped a lot of people that they've sent in to us that help them, whether it's a daughter or a son and a mother or a father, that they've been able to go in and talk to them about stuff. Yeah, I think it's been a way to it's inspired people to reconnect. Yeah, you know, with their parents, that, that parents that might not live in the same place that they don't see yeah. all the time. So. Yeah, and I think that 
And the way that your your relationship with your parents, uh, like that, when you become an adult, it's one of those things that it changes. But a lot of times, it kind of you. I think people get blindsided by the fact that, like, okay, now I'm an adult having a relationship with my adult parent. Um, but it's it's hard to change like the um, the ground rules of the relationship now that everybody's an adult. You know, it's like mm-hmm. it's a different conversation. You know, some people get, get stuck at different points in that. You know, it's like some people may still talk to their parents if they're in their. If, you know, it might be forty five, but every interaction they have with their parent is as if they're still fourteen, and that. Because you fall in, you, you grow up in an environment, and you and you fall into these patterns, right. and you set these rules of, okay, this maybe it's a power dynamic, or you know, it's whatever the dynamic is. It's it's the th- sometimes it's really hard to change that, and so I feel like the podcast for us kind of defined a new era of our relationship that was much more adult to adult. Yep. And I mean we did it for comedic effect like like having the adult the R-rated jokes and stuff. But it's um I actually think that was good for us because it 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 really defined that like hey, we're having we're both adults here. And we can if the things that I can talk about with you or any of my other friends um I can actually have that type of rapport with with that, you know? Mm-hmm. I, did you feel that? Like when, when we started, it was like, I mean, people would send in the jokes, some of which were raunchy, and then we like we kind of went more into the raunchy jokes. But the fact that we were talking, we were like cutting up and having fun with that type of stuff that is not something that like growing up we'd ever we'd, talk we'd, about. We'd, we had we'd to ever tracks. done. Yeah, right. no, yeah, you know. But the thing about the what Link and I talk about, and, they, and sometimes it's stuff like that, and sometimes it's different different things. But people write in and say, "I had my dad sit down and watch this podcast mm-hmm. and listen to y'all talk back and forth, and that broke the ice between." Mm. us being able to talk as an, like what Link just said, as an adult, instead of my dad talking to me like I'm still a child. Yeah, it's important. I mean, It's really so important. I thought, and there's been girls and guys did do the same thing. Right. And a lot of them was with parents. Not And most of them wasn't with their mother. It was with their dad. So they would kind of, See things that are different in the world now, and this is the way we need to react, interact together with yeah, one another. I love it. I love to hear it. Um, I think it's it's like you said. If there's not many things like it, it's really special. People should go listen to it if you're not listening to it. Speaking of our schedule, we do. We're three minutes late for the thing that we said we were. Oh, really? Yeah. You know. Okay. Our, we have to go be CEOs. Okay. And lead our company wide meeting. Well, with the power outage, we were kind of under the under the gun. Uh, okay, so give give a quick pitch for the for the shows. Uh, g- give a promo for the show so people can go. Well, y'all listen. come on and watch Dispatches from Myrtle Beach and uh, trying to remember my email address. <laughs> uh, you can remember it. You got to tell them. I can't. Hey, I'm getting old. Sometimes I'm senile. <laughs> rather. <laughs> oh, rather be shagging 53 at AOL.com. So, <laughs> there it is. Yeah. Hey, it's been a while. <laughs> if you send him an email, if it's a joke, we'll try to figure it out together. If it's a question, he'll try to answer it. And uh, sometimes people ask questions like a, that kind of mine experiences from his life so that I learn things. Those are some <laughs> of my favorite questions. Mm. So, And then at the end of every episode... We tell each other that we love each other. Oh, yeah. And I think that really resonates with people. A lot of people talk about that. People who don't say that they love their parents. That's like, they, it's, you know, you fall out of the habit of that. Mm. And um, so we've heard a lot of people talk about that. I think that's what the main thing is that, like, we're just we're just having a good time cutting up. I mean, you know, it's just, that's that, just how we love each other. They know that's genuine when we tell yep. one another that. 
at the end, Rhett. So, I mean, they, they can see that. Yeah. yeah. Well, I and love, I like, I love and y'all. I wanted to tell y'all. <laughs> I wanted to, we love you Thanks too, for man. having me on Ear Biscuits, and I enjoyed it. Yeah, thanks for being here. Thanks for, uh, I know we're making you do a lot of things while you're out here. Your schedule's pretty packed. Yeah, somebody asked me, <laughs> said, what are you going to do? I said, I, I got to work Thursday and Friday and Monday and Tuesday and then get back on a plane, go back to <laughs> go back home, go to work. So yeah. I said, what's the difference? We're putting in the work while he's out here. <laughs> <laughs> you doing good, Dad. <laughs> All right. Thanks for joining us for another Ear Biscuit. Remember, you can call us and leave us a message at 1-888-EARPOD1. And we'll see you next week. You got to wave that way, Dan. Hey, Rhett and Link. This is Abby. Um, I just, I was listening to the duo episode, and I wanted to validate Link in his choice of Toad in Super Mario Brothers 2. Toad was indeed the best character to play with. He was fast. He was efficient. He was awesome. Peach was probably the second best because she could fly. But Mario and Luigi, even though they're a fantastic duo, they were crap in that game. (laughs) Except for Luigi because he could jump really high and you had to use them for like one level where you had to cheat. But that's what I wanted to say. So Link, you're totally validated in using Toad. And I loved hearing you guys talk about one of my favorite games. So thanks. Bye. To watch more Ear Biscuits, click on the playlist on the right. To watch the previous episode of Ear Biscuits, click on the playlist to the left. And don't forget to click on the circular icon to subscribe. If you prefer to listen to this podcast, it's available on all your favorite podcast platforms. Thanks for being your mythical best.